He's too far gone. The way he thinks is wrong. He's a broken record spinning tired lyrics to a pop song. Head down on the desk, Christmas trees tests. Nothing but a pest to the teacher who spent six hours writing that lecture to deliver well-crafted knowledge to his uneager, ungrateful, rude ears. How dare he sit there and send texts and flick me off when I've turned my head. He's past the age of moldability. He's reached the age of accountability. Yet every word from his filthy mouth spews obscenities. You cannot save them all. They're already 14. Except Dave. He walked through glass doors with his chin to his chest, hair in his eyes. I was the alpha male he grew to despise. Dad's in the clink. Mom sees a shrink. Everything about his world says you will fail. Failed to keep mom and dad together. Failed to find a friend because he was afraid they might see what's behind those glazed eyes. Failed to speak out in class because the teacher told him, all you speak are lies. But you don't know what it's like to be a foster kid. You're not my dad. My dad knows my middle name. How am I supposed to focus on in-text citations when the only people I share relations with were slapped with cuffs and walked out my front door? And you have the nerve to tell me I'm bored? But then Dave got to create. The last thing on his mind was a grade when he picked up that paintbrush and moved it with a newfound grace. And he created art that moved him from beyond this time and space. And he poured every ounce of his pent up rage into creating a masterpiece that he worked on night and day. Perhaps the stars are not that far away. Because you see, Dave sees colors on a black and white canvas. He holds the future in the palm of his hand. This boy stands on a rocket that has not landed. His explosions are no longer aimed at the social worker who grabbed that hand or the teacher who couldn't get him to understand. No, Dave detonates creativity that sends shivers up my arms. He is the reason I do not snooze my alarm. I am a witness to greatness this world has never seen. And most people would never believe that my boy Dave got his first A ever. Oh, and then there's Hannah. Her daddy never told her how rare her eyes are or how beautiful she is when she smiles. All she's heard is a screen door slamming shut at 6 a.m. and creaking open again in the evening when he walks past and asks, did you do your homework? And hell no, she didn't do her homework because all she can think about is being empty and hungry. And if she could just hold off from eating one more meal, he would finally feel that he gave birth to something beautiful. And so she sits in class with a blank stare and gets embarrassed by her teacher when she puts her hand in the air because the only time she raises it is to ask to go to the bathroom. And the teacher thinks that's just plain rude. But what that teacher doesn't know is that Hannah's convinced that everybody's eyes are trained on her and that each one of them is thinking exactly like her father. And so she escapes this class to fill her throat with her finger. But then Hannah wrote a poem. Not a haiku or a sonnet with a technical meter, no. She followed the instructions given by her teacher. And she let her pencil dance pirouettes across the page. And sometimes she pressed it down so hard that the lead punched through with rage. But her writing softened as the tears on the sheet dried. And as her soul's longing became art, those hunger pangs died. And if she said the pain was completely gone, she'd admit she lied. But let me tell you, Hannah, was finally alive. Because you see, she starved herself as a sign of her imperfection, when all she wanted was her daddy's affection. But when this girl writes poetry, she's found her protection. Beautiful Hannah has experienced resurrection. Neela Karinji. It's a shrub that grows on the hills of South India. It spends its first decade and a half stretching its stems and sending its roots deep into the soil for when monsoons come and try to rip them from the ground. For most of its life, the Nila Karinji looks like a weed, strangling the Indian countryside. The wax on its pale green leaves often reflect the grim clouds that float over the Nilagiri hills. Nilagiri literally means blue mountains. Because you see, the Nila Karinji flower takes 14 years to bloom. And when their petals finally gush their radiant ink into the Indian grass, the wind whistles a new song. 
The years of being a doll bramble creeping along in the dirt are over. And the villagers who did not rip this shrub from the ground, for they knew what it would become if given enough time and water, would say, wow, that 14 years was worth the wait.